Hey everybody, this is Rob Smith from The Body Project. And tonight, what I wanna talk to you about is something called interference field. Uh, interference fields are something that creates neurological interference. What that means is, if you think of a nerve pathway, we've talked about this a little bit before, but if you think of a nerve pathway like a hose, and when we have optimal functioning of our nervous system, we have flow. And you think of a hose that has flow. And the interference fields are anything that would kink the hose, decreasing the electrical uh, response to a muscle or an organ or a gland. So think of this, if you don't have flow, and it doesn't matter if you talk to someone in conventional medicine or you talk to someone in the alternative space, the one thing nobody will ever refute is when we have a blockage of any kind, bad things happen. And so when it comes to your nervous system, we always want flow. And these interference fields are things that create disruption with the nervous system. So they kink the hose. So the muscle, the organ, the gland, when it doesn't have flow, when it isn't energized or innervated, then what happens is the organ, gland, or muscle will become dysfunctional. And when we know when the body gets out of balance and becomes dysfunctional, that's when symptoms manifest. So what are the interference fields? The interference fields are, let's just look at them. We got chemical stress, electromagnetic stress, nutrition, physical or structural stress, thermal stress, remember being too hot, too cold, uh, heavy metals, immune challenges, so that's bacteria and viruses and parasites, mental or emotional stress, any of these things can kink the, that, that hose, so to speak, creating electrical disruption and creating dysfunction with, again, wherever it's being innervated, a muscle, an organ, or a gland. So tonight what we're gonna talk a, a little bit about is how scars can really create low back problems, can create hip problems. Now I wanna just kind of share a story with you about a client that uh, recently rehabilitated 30, 34, 35 year old gal uh, had just had twins recently, but she had had a history of about 17 years of chronic low back pain. And she was really starting to struggle with hip pain as well. And when I first evaluated her, we found that her deep spinal stabilizers, meaning the muscles that support and stabilize her spine, were not functioning optimally. So if we think of this microphone as our spine, the intrinsic stabilization system stabilizes the spine. When they're not working, then you have what's called a naked spine. So there's nothing there stabilizing the spine. Now the spine is not designed to be load bearing. In fact, studies have actually indicated that with as little as two and a half pounds of pressure, the spine can be damaged. Think of the spine as an anchor point for the musculature. So if the muscles are not doing their job, then all the stress is going into that spine. And so you can actually feel stress in the ligaments, the tendons, and in the case of a back, can be the discs. Anyway, so she was having chronic low back pain for about 17 years. And when we were doing the evaluation, we, we found out that the, the, her deep core muscles were not working. And when we dug a little deeper into it, and, and she flipped over and I was asking her where she was on her stomach and I was asking her, you know, show me exactly where you're, you're getting the pain. And I saw that she had a tattoo on her lower back. Well, a tattoo uh, can really create significant interference uh, or electrical disruption. So you think of a tattoo as something that kinks that hose and she, I said, uh, well, not only can tattoos do that, 
but belly button rings uh, can oftentimes create electrical interference. And she just kind of gasped and she said, oh my gosh, I had a tattoo. And of course I got the tattoo. And she said, I also had had my belly button pierced. And that's right about when I started experiencing my low back. So a belly button ring, oh, that can create a number of issues. Number one, it kinks the hose. So those deep core muscles shut down, but also it can affect this major meridian. And we've seen many young uh, women that have had problems with migraine headaches even, uh, and it was directly linked to the, their belly button ring. And so when it comes to tattoos and belly button rings, we really make sure that uh, not only our clients, but you know, if we're dealing with parents of, of kids who may have a belly button ring or want to get a piercing um, or, you know, in that area or a tattoo, you know, we really encourage them not to get that done because of the electrical interference it can cause. And so she had a history of those muscles being shut down. Well, when those muscles get shut down, then your body goes into compensation and you go into spasm. And she did acupuncture and she did massage therapy and she did cupping. Uh, she saw a chiropractor on a regular basis. Nothing was helping her with her low back pain. Well, the reason was is because those deep core muscles, the muscles that supported and stabilized the spine were not working. So you have to re-educate or get those muscles to function again through a specific sequence of exercises. But first and foremost, you have to make sure you clear the electrical disruption. So with a, a tattoo, you know, we might have to use something like cold laser therapy or we'll test for like a wheat germ oil or sesame oil to see if we can deactivate that stressor on, on a person's nervous system. Well, it, it's interesting because we started to make tremendous progress and all of a sudden, you know, her back, she just could not believe how quickly she was responding. So she, of course, no longer had the belly button ring, but we had to start the process of really engaging those deep core muscles. And then as we worked on the tattoo, so her low back pain was going away and she was very excited about that, but she had this chronic hip pain and it was right in the crease of her hip. And so when my wife, uh, Paula tested her, she was coming up with a food intolerance that was shutting her, her uh, deep core muscles down. So she would have this intermittent shutdown of her core muscles and it was from dairy. And the interesting thing about it was she had just had twins. She was breastfeeding and she thought they needed to get more calcium. So she, she thought she needed to ingest more calcium. Well, drinking dairy is a horrible source because most people just chemically, they just can't break it down. Part of that's contingent on a person's blood type. Today, if you look at the milk, homogenization and pasteurization, it denatures the protein, uh, it destroys all the enzymatic activity. And so today, I, I simply call it white pus because it is pure garbage, especially if you look at commercial farming today. The practice of, of um, producing milk, it's just become so bastardized. And what's happened is what used to be a great food is becoming, the reason I call it white pus is because a lot of these uh, commercial operations will milk their cows multiple times a day. It used to be you milked them once in the morning, once at night. Well, now they're milking them three, four times a day. They get sores on their udders. So then they start to get infection. So what do they do? They give them antibiotics to accelerate growth they're giving them growth hormone. And so they're pumping them full of hormones and antibiotics. And that's why so many kids today that drink a lot of dairy, what you'll see 
is you'll see an increase in body fat in their cheeks because they're increasing estrogens in their body. And so it's important that when we look at what a person's consuming, we're consuming foods that are minimally processed, whole foods. And then we have to look at just because a food is good for you doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be good for me and vice versa. So remember, food can be like medicine or it can be like poison. Well, with this particular individual, it was really inflaming her body. And when your body is inflamed, right, obviously it's going to lead to generally a pain syndrome. And so for her, we had to obviously, you know, get her abdominal muscles uh, re-educated again. We had to use cold laser, and I believe it was uh, wheat germ oil we were using on her her uh, scar and her tattoo. She had also had an episiotomy scar from uh, giving birth to the twins. So she had all these things that were creating uh, electrical disruption or stress on her nervous system, i.e. kinking all those hoses. And it's no wonder her, her low back muscles were completely shut down. So again, she was getting massages. She had acupuncture. She had chiropractic. Uh, she did cupping. She did all these things. And basically what it was doing was just chasing the pain. So unless you look at the body holistically, there's many people that will just fall through the cracks and just never, ever get better. And so with this situation, it was addressing the scar. Uh, obviously, she no longer had the belly button ring, but belly button rings, sometimes we've had people that have had belly button rings while we we're conditioning them. And we said, if you don't get rid of the belly button ring, you're never going to get better because it's creating too much stress on your nervous system. And believe it or not, some people are reluctant to actually take it out, but when they do and they start to get relief, that's when it starts to reinforce that belief system. Well, maybe there's something to this. So we've seen that many times, but when it comes to low back pain and hip pain, there's always multiple variables. But with this particular individual, it was a food intolerance. It was the dairy. Uh, I, I believe she also came up with sugar. So sugar was inflaming her. But had someone like us not assessed her properly and holistically, who knows how long she would have continued to, to have problems. And so I'm happy to say she is completely pain-free. She's completely off dairy, no longer consumes dairy. And we periodically have to do a cold laser treatment just to make sure, and we test her regularly just to make sure her tattoo doesn't uh, become activated again. And so another problem with tattoos uh, creating interference with the nervous system is they're also loaded with heavy metals in the inks. And heavy metals can be a very challenging uh, interference field. So we have to be so careful today what we're putting in our body and what we're putting on our body. And so that's how stressors like a tattoo, a piercing, or any other surgical scar can create problems within your body. So tomorrow we're going to talk a little bit about physical structure, uh, posture, we're going to talk about uh, muscle balance, and then we're going to also talk a little bit about nutrition and how these things can affect our nervous system. So hopefully you picked up a thing or two tonight. Uh, if you uh, enjoy the information, if you got some good information from it, if you would please like the video. And then if you have a friend or family member that you think uh, might be able to benefit from this information, please share it with them. Tattoos, piercings, scars, episiotomy, hysterectomy, and cesarean scars. This is something that so many women go through and are challenged with and don't even know it. This information definitely needs to get out there, definitely share it. So until I see you tomorrow, go out and make it a great day and be well.